so okay, n number one, there is no there is no single human utility function, right? So ev every human is entitled to their own preferences about what they want the future to be like. And, and let me be clear on this. When I say human preferences, I don't mean like, do you prefer plain pizza to pineapple pizza? I mean preferences between two, as it were, completely specified futures that include all the events that you could ever care about that would make, the, make you prefer one future over another. Um, and that's a, that's a hypothetical construct, right? I can't even show you those two futures in detail. But you could maybe imagine that I could make you a two-hour movie of each of them. and You could kind of watch that in full 3D, sense around, uh, and, and sort of live that life. And in, you know, in, for most pairs of futures, it would be pretty clear within the first few minutes which one you like best. Um, and then there would be some where you might say, well, I, this is a summary of those two futures, but I still am not really sure which one I like best. Now, if that's the case, then you know, I think we're already to the point where uh, the AI system is unlikely to induce a catastrophe. Um, because if it's, if it's understood your preferences at least up to that degree of precision, then um, you're probably you know, we're probably out of the woods in terms of uh, avoiding major disasters. Um, now, uh, as I said, the, at any given point in the, in the interaction between a machine and a particular human, um, there will still be radical uncertainty about the full human preference structure. And then there are some additional complications to do with the fact that your preferences are uh, plastic, that they change over time, um, and we want to avoid the failure mode whereby the AI system simply changes your preferences to be easier to satisfy rather than helping you satisfy your real preferences. Um, and certainly uh, wireheading is one example. So wireheading is the idea that um, if you give someone a button uh, and, and a wire, and the wire connects to the pleasure centers of the brain, um, you know, and this has been tested with animals up to the point of death, uh, and with humans up to the point of exhaustion, uh, you know, and complete neglect of personal hygiene for, you know, 24 hours. Or we would just keep doing it, and probably we would keep doing it until we died as well. Um, so, uh, the why is that a bad thing, right? I mean, you are clearly expressing your preferences by pressing this button. Um, this is because evolution has built into us this reward system, which is mostly helpful, right? Our dopamine system is mostly helpful in pursuing uh, nutritious foods and avoiding pain and, uh, and so on, reproducing. Um, but it's not a perfect signpost for evolutionary fitness. And it's certainly not a perfect signpost for how we think humans should, should live in an advanced civilization. Um, and so we, we learn we have all these cultural constraints that keep our dopamine system uh, under control. Uh, and and we, we let our cognitive system do uh, a lot more of the decision making. But it's, you know, we still have this, uh, you know, these ways of shortcutting. Um, and our dopamine system is still really strong. Um, and, uh, you know, there are some species, apparently there's a species of sloth which is addicted to its food supply to such an extent that um, it doesn't bother reproducing anymore because it's so zonked out the whole time. Now, I don't know if this is really true, maybe it's a, an urban legend, but it seems like that species is going extinct um, because of its dopamine system uh, being not quite aligned with reproductive fitness. And um, so one of the things that AI systems have to do um, is, is not just this sort of very gross shortcutting uh, via the wire heading, but, but to help us uh, avoid our general inability to act